Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching a brand new edition of India as well with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Sri Lankan President Maitri Pala Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe have been at loggerheads since last year and their political differences have now stretched to security ties with the United States. Vikramasinghe told Parliament last week that the proposed Status of Forces Agreement was not a military pact but only an agreement establishing the rights and privileges that U.S. military personnel would enjoy if they were in the country. Sirisena, however, said that he would not sign any military cooperation deals that he believes are unsuitable for the country. Meanwhile, the U.S. ambassador, trying to assuage concerns over U.S. involvement in the tiny island, said last week that there were no plans to set up a military base. Sri Lanka sits near one of the world's busiest shipping routes in the Indian Ocean. And over the last several years, China has become a major investor, building ports and highways. Experts believe India is starting to push back against China's growing influence, and so are the United States and Japan. On this edition of India's World, we will analyze US-Sri Lanka military pact and its implications. Joining me on the program today are K.P. Fabian, former ambassador, Vice Admiral Shekhar Sinha, retired strategic expert, and uh, Rajesh Sundaram, senior journalist. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of India's World. Ambassador, I'd like to begin the program with you. Let's first try and analyze this proposed military pact between the United States and Sri Lanka that has run into a lot of trouble in the tiny island nation. I should start by saying that I belong to that generation which uh, tried to dissuade Sri Lanka from having strong military ties with the United States. Way back in 79-82 when I was there, United States was trying to have uh, arrangements at Trincomalee on the East Coast, a wonderful port. And they also had two uh, plants and they did uh, have it, a Voice of America facility near uh, Colombo. We, India, wa were against both. Well, Trincomalee did not materialize, though I should recall that uh, I had a meeting with the U.S. ambassador in Colombo. Uh, I asked him about Trincomalee, what his plans were, and uh, he said, no, we have no plans at all. We have no uh, interest at all. But I had with me a piece of paper which uh, listed Trincomalee as one of the ports where, you know, American Navy could uh, go. So there was keen interest. Now, having said that, I should say that uh, since uh, the Chinese uh, presence and influence in Sri Lanka are increasing, I personally would sub like to see a countervailing United States presence in Sri Lanka. As a matter of fact, uh, Sri Lanka can be called an aircraft carrier, very strategically placed. And uh, with Hamban Dota already given to China on a 99-year lease, because Sri Lanka could not pay back uh, the loan which they had taken from uh, China, and other inroads which China has made, I think it is important that uh, the Chinese uh, presence, there should be a countervailing force and uh, United States coming in will be uh, of interest to India. Mm -hmm. But as you said in the opening remarks, there is uh, a divergence of views between the president, who is incidentally the defense minister, and the prime minister, who has been through the foreign office conducting these negotiations for so far. But let us see how things will turn out. Absolutely. So is this another flashpoint, Rajesh Sundaram? Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of this happening over the last uh, year and a half or so between the President and the Prime Minister. Is this uh, the new thing really for them to go at each other, at, be, to be at loggerheads? Well, I think the timing uh, is, is, is not right. If you look at, this is an election year and uh, you have the JVP and other right-wing 
uh, Sinhalese Buddhist parties which are against any move that they see as an uh, as as something that would go against the sovereignty of the country. Uh, so uh, the election year being there, and also the fact that the president and the prime minister don't see eye to eye, they've lost months uh, trying to figure out who uh, is in power. They had those blasts uh, uh, on Easter, uh, which was totally messed up, uh, you know, in terms of before and after uh, because of this uh, this thing here again this year uh, with this, you know. If you look at what happened in 2007, when the LTT and the uh, the Sri Lankan government, the army were uh, in, in conflict at that time, they had passed a similar logistical uh, agreement between the two nations, and that went through because the Gotabaya Rajapaksa was the defence secretary at that time. His brother was the president. His uh, uh, the other brother was the speaker, and they could pass that through. But this time around, with conflicts within the government uh, and the fact that this is an election year. Uh, things will be very difficult for them uh, to pull through this time around. Absolutely. Admiral, I'd like to bring you to the picture. Now, I'm going to take uh, the point that the ambassador made forward. Now, he called Sri Lanka uh, an aircraft carrier. He said it's strategically located in a region uh, which is very, very important. Take us through the strategic importance of Sri Lanka and what it means for the region as a whole. Uh, Sri Lanka is very much, uh, you know, it is right in the middle of the ocean. And most of the sea route, the sea lanes of communications are uh, through the uh, south of Ambandota port. And therefore, its importance is very much there. And uh, Ambassador Shiv Shankar Menon, when he wrote that book, he has mentioned about uh, Ambandota, <coughs> saying that it's an aircraft carrier sitting right in the middle. Uh, coming back to this, uh, the, you know, the uh, SOFA and AXA, as they call it, they already have an agreement of the acquisition and the you know cross servicing agreement uh, that provides for the ports of the sri lanka airports etc can be utilized by the americans if they need so be uh, that doesn't mean that they're going to base people there the so far the the uh, basically the what what will be the status of the armed forces uh, primarily it will probably be seeking a diplomatic immunity for their operation which gives a sense that uh, they will be based and they will be operating left, right and center. But the government of India has very clearly mentioned that they will welcome whatever the government of Sri Lanka decides. Uh, it's a democracy. Uh, no agreement is signed till such time. There is a convergence in strategic thoughts. And therefore, I think that the main issue is uh, the inclination of the prime minister more to the Western powers and with the president little more inclined to the Chinese, uh, the issue is really at the bottom, that's the issue. Uh, because if you, if, you, if you go back to history, uh, US has spent a lot of money in the, in the, in the small island. Uh, recently, after the uh, LTT was sort of defeated and wiped out, uh, US Navy has actually helped the uh, Sri Lankans to raise a Marine Corps. Completely trained by the uh, by the uh, U.S. Navy, uh, they have also given them about 39 million dollars last year to strengthen their maritime domain awareness. So maritime domain awareness required for the Americans to know all the time as to what is happening in this region. Uh, we do have agreements with the Central Command and also have agreement with the PACOMs, as you know. Uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, it is good that the agreement in an agreed form between two countries uh, goes through, we will accept it the way it is and in a long run is going to be helpful because what India would like to see the last thing is the Chinese influence in the neighborhood. Absolutely. So ultimately it amounts to that what will be India's inclination. I would think that whatever is agreed by the government in a democratic country, obviously there is some convergence between the two and therefore it should be acceptable to us. You know, this is the point that I want to take forward with you, Ambassador. India has made it categorically clear that it is closely watching the proceedings because whatever happens in Sri Lanka at the end of the day is of concern to us as well because India is Sri Lanka's closest neighbor. But also, uh, the uh, you know, Indian establishment has very categorically suggested and stated that it, ha it wants to have nothing to do with what happens in Sri Lanka. It is for Sri Lanka to decide its way forward and what the course should be. Is that the best approach? Yes, I think so, because uh, we have chosen our words very carefully. Whatever Sri Lankan government decides to do, 
in this matter, we would uh, endorse it or welcome it. But at the same time, as the Admiral has clearly spelt out, we certainly have a security interest. Sri Lanka comes within our security perimeter and a certain countervailing of Chinese uh, presence and Chinese plans is very much in India's interest. And uh, within Sri Lanka, I want to make this point, the Admiral referred to the security uh, agreement, acquisition and cross-service uh, agreement, very important. Now, this was signed in 2007, and there was much controversy about it. They did not have a singular version of the agreement for a long time, and the government also took its own time. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, within the Sri Lankan mindset, uh, you know, there is uh, uh, considerable divergence. And Pompeo, when he was in India, the Secretary of State, uh, uh, in June, from Delhi, before going to Osaka, he was supposed to go to Colombo. Colombo, yes. And he had to cancel it. Of course, the U.S. Embassy uh, diplomatically said in Colombo said that it was scheduling problems but as a matter of fact there were demonstrations and uh, Pompeo had wanted to discuss a couple of things like uh, freedom of navigation in the Indian Ocean and also in the Indo-Pacific uh, area and he also had wanted to discuss uh, a planned uh, let me see the amount that was uh, uh, $480 million, that was from American Millennium uh, Challenge Corporation uh, fund to be given to Sri Lanka. So America is looking at uh, Sri Lanka very closely. And uh, uh, so the internal struggle within Sri Lanka has to be sorted out. But uh, let me make it clear that uh, since uh, the president is also the fo defense minister and the uh, State Minister of State for Defence has already come out with a statement saying that uh, without the Defence Minister's stroke, President's uh, approval, no such agreement can be signed. So True. let's see. Let's see. Yeah, we will have to wait and see what exactly happens. But what has been happening on the ground in Sri Lanka, Rajasundaram, is that there have been several protests taking place. Mm -hmm. Are those protests politically motivated? Are those protests being held with an eye on the elections? Well, absolutely. I mean, if you look at Sri Lanka, the, the two political groupings there are either pro-India, pro-China. There's a very real uh, possibility that the next elections could see, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Rajapakse and his family, either Gotabaya uh, or somebody from the family taking over. That would mean that uh, a, 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 a treaty like this uh, could take further to come through. Although uh, Mr. Gotabaya Rajapakse has himself uh, served in the US and he's, he is a US citizen and so is many members of the family. Uh, but they have a leaning that's towards China. That's why there's a, a rush to get it over with before December, uh, uh, you know, till when the elections are to take place, the next government uh, has to uh, come back in uh, power. So, uh, yes, I, I mean, until that election, you have the the JVP and other groups who will use it, who will milk this issue uh, to the hilt. They know that there is a rift within the government between the president and the prime minister. And all of those issues are, 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 are issues that uh, political rivals will, will want to use to the hilt uh, to get electoral advantage. Uh, and that's what we'll see uh, that, in the coming that, months. That having been said, how big a political issue is this in Sri Lanka? Do you think? It is a big uh, political issue, especially when they talk about sovereignty, the fact that also it doesn't help that many details about this draft are not available to the public. Now that makes it very uh, a very easy game for the politicians and the opposition to come out and make all kinds of allegations say that, you know, there have been this compromises or that. Also the fund uh, 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 that Ambassador was speaking about, the 400 odd million dollars under the, uh, uh, the act, uh, uh, you know, that is coming in. The Chamber of Commerce there also is getting into a political football there and asking the government on what would this fund be about and how it's going to be used. So many see this also as a, as a quid pro quo, you know, where the Americans would be allowed to use it. They're already using it for logistical uh, reasons. And the other thing that I'm seeing right now is that there's a lot of scrutiny of the movement of American aircraft from uh, Colombo, from the Bandar uh, airport. So every day you have reports coming out from the, uh, you know, from, from the media, which is close to the opposition, which talks about secret missions that private American uh, cargo planes uh, are coming in and or, or uh, you know vessels from the US 
uh, at the Colombo port. So all of this will happen, I think, in the run-up to the elections. Uh, these th this will become a big political football if you know what i mean uh, and it, and i think a resolution will have to wait the next government but of course there's a real fear that it may not be a ranil vikramasinghe who may return or or a pro west uh, person who may return which which i think is what uh, is is forcing diplomats to get a solution for this as soon as possible absolutely so uh, admiral so why this renewed interest really as far as the united states is concerned in Sri Lanka. You know, they've always been interested in Sri Lanka, but in between there was a bit of a lull and now again there's this renewed interest. Why is that so? I think very straightforward is because of the uh, Chinese arrival in the Indian Ocean uh, and they are obviously very concerned that the Chinese have got a footprint now and they might come in a big way. So this is very much the, the military supremacy and economic supremacy which are both under challenge uh, by the Chinese uh, against the US. So that is one very big reason. And secondly, the Americans have realized that uh, uh, India and Sri Lanka, because of their geographical location, uh, they are very important even to support their missions in uh, Gulf, uh, support their mission in South China Sea. It's right in the middle. Uh, so that is one. But what I want to draw attention is to the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, Admiral Ravi uh, Vijay Gunaratne. Uh, he had just been to uh, Moscow with a big defense uh, delegation. He has come back and he was speaking at a, a seminar in which he says that in the present form, uh, this is not acceptable. Uh, but he says that, you know, you cannot ignore the US because they are saying that if you can give your Humban Tota port for 99 year lease to the Chinese, why not me? And uh, in Moscow, the Moscow uh, defense establishment has been saying, if you give it to the US, why not us? Mm. So, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the Sri Lankans are in a real doldrum as to which path they should go. CDS is suggesting that you should take a middle path. Really speaking, if you go to the bottom of it, it is uh, the Foreign Service Department and the Defense Department. There is a fair amount of friction between these two. And I think uh, Ambassador Fabian was quite right in saying that they have got to sort out their internal issues. Here, most of the agreements which have been signed... Uh, they have been hurried through the Foreign Service, for the Foreign Department, Foreign Affairs Department. Uh, now, the, because the President has uh, got an election coming up uh, and the CDS is very much a uh, person who has been you know, appointed by him. So, he is suggesting that let's take a middle path. You can't ignore Russia. You can't ignore uh, America. So, possibly they may have a, a little bit of change of the wordings uh, like we did for Lemoa. Lemo was called for uh, by some other name, but Indians did, were not very happy with the uh, words. So some articles were changed to suit the Indian sort of uh, laws, and then it was accepted as Lemoa. The original act is not called Lemoa; it is specific to India. Similarly, they might find a method of uh, uh, doing this. And as as the government uh, spokesman has already said, that whatever the government decides is okay with us, because whether Americans are there or not. We have to be concerned about the Chinese influence in the neighborhood. Absolutely. That happens without even U.S. being there or U.S. being there. U.S. and us, we have good equation. But uh, yet the U.S. has imposed sanction on S-400. Yet the U.S. has imposed sanction on buying Iranian oil. And some talks are still going on. The Foreign Service talk has just got over last week. So, you know, these things happen. Um, and therefore, that we will reach a conclusion very soon, it is very unlikely because there are various factors. One is a political like uh, Ramesh just mentioned here. Uh, Rajesh. And, uh, Rajesh and Ambassador mentioned about that they have to come together. And thirdly, the, the Chief of Defense Staff, he is an important pillar as far as the uh, defense agreements are concerned. So, if he is saying that take a middle path, then obviously this entire SOFA agreement or arrangement, which is likely to give complete diplomatic immunity to the uh, American forces if they are there. It generates a concern that are they trying to operate on a long-term basis from our land. But that is the uh, that is a concern of the Defense Department. I am sure they will sort it out. They are quite intelligent people. And uh, soon you will have some kind of uh, uh, middle path to be taken. And I am sure that Prime Minister also will realize this that he also has to fight an election. Absolutely. So, the election is not only for one party, it is for the whole country. So, they are all playing their cards with the election in mind. Certainly, the defense establishment is playing its cards by saying the actual issue of is it good for Sri Lanka, 
uh, security or not. So I think we will come to some somewhere in between. Absolutely. All right. Closing comments now from all my guests, starting <coughs> first with you, Ambassador. So have the battle lines or so strategic battle lines now shifted from the lands of West Asia and, and you know, Central Asia to now the Indo-Pacific, where all the big players seem to be, you know, converging uh, in, in the oceans or in the waters of the Indo-Pacific. Well, as we sit here, there is tension uh, in the Gulf. There is, yes. <laughs> and uh, so, we can't say that, uh, you know, all the attention has gone to uh, South Asia. But uh, coming to this matter, there is already a report that instead of a SOFA, they will have uh, what is called a visiting forces agreement. Now, even SOFA, you know, there is no identical text. United States has uh, so far with so many countries. Take Japan, for example, where the question of immunity comes. And it clearly says that uh, whatever the American forces do in uh, Japan on, uh, as part of the line of duty, the Japanese court cannot, uh, you know, uh, have a judicial uh, say in it. Also, if uh, an American attacks another American soldier, there again, Japanese judiciary has no role. But uh, if an American soldier attacks a Japanese, then the Japanese court has to say. So it's a little complicated. But uh, my reckoning is that uh, America is determined to, you know, uh, come to an, uh, strengthen its military ties with uh, Sri Lanka. And uh, over time, they will succeed. Mm. Because uh, I agree that uh, within Sri Lanka, uh, it can be argued, you know, these Americans are coming in and all that. But uh, the Chinese presence also, there will be resistance to it, you know. Chinese presence over time can uh, uh, sort of uh, provoke uh, uh, resistance. So it will be in Sri Lanka's interest to have Americans there. And if uh, Russians want to be there, let them be there. Then they will sort of, you know, mutually not reinforce each other, mutually balance out each other. Japan also wants to have a big role to, or a big uh, well, say Japan in, in also Sri Lanka. Is interesting. Yeah. In fact, uh, I would like to see Japan and uh, India working together on infrastructure mm. in Sri Lanka. Sure. They, they have the money, we have the expertise and, you know, a lot of other advantages in doing things in Sri Lanka. Absolutely. Rajesh Sundaram, how do you uh, see things pan out in the mm. days to come? So as a journalist, I would say that, you know, I'd look at the elections because before the elections, there'll be no resolution to this and it'll really depend on what tilt uh, the next Prime Minister and President have uh, in this, you know. Uh, so, if it is a pro-West government that comes in, uh, you know, these are things that, you know, can be easily discussed, negotiated and taken. But if it's a pro-China, uh, it will be a different ball game altogether. So, I would say that we'll have to wait uh, till the elections, till the end of this year, before we actually see uh, where this is going. Play the waiting game like we, well, like we did in the Maldives as well, is yes. what you're suggesting. Uh, uh, Admiral, close the show for us with your concluding remarks. I think the uh, Indo-Pacific will remain central to the American sort of uh, geopolitical uh, future and which is playing out in this part of the world, as you mentioned. Uh, the A very quiet Cold War is already on between the Chinese and, and, the, and, and the Americans. And if Russians want to pitch in, it is just to shake hands with the Chinese. Let's, let there be no mistake on that. And therefore, the Americans will probably like to preempt even the uh, Russian arrival. Because Russian Navy, right now, it is not so big to be present everywhere in the world. Um, but certainly, uh, this will act as a resist the rise of China and enter into the Indian Ocean in a big way. So that is one of the, uh, uh, the strategic uh, intentions that I see. Um, and they will have to come to some agreement. And uh, uh, the Sri Lankans know it very well. They are very, very sharp people. I mean, after all, they are uh, genetically just like uh, most of us. Uh, so he, uh, there will be a solution. Uh, it may, may not happen right now. Uh, but whatever happens, I think it will be uh, good for the littorals of this uh, whole region, the Indo-Pacific region, particularly the IOR region. Uh, because if you have influence of only one country, uh, which is, uh, does not have very transparent financial systems, does not have, uh, you know, the, uh, shall I say, the, normally the rule of the law not being followed very well in South China Sea. One doesn't know how will China turn out in the IOC. And therefore, I think having a democratic country uh, do a 
agreement with another democracy for the Indian Ocean region, it will be good. Okay. All right. On that note, then we'll call it a wrap on this edition of uh, India's World. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. We'd like to hear from you as well. Do share your uh, feedback with us. Our email ID is indiasworld.feedback at gmail.com. You can also tweet to us using our Twitter handles at FRP09 and at Rajasabha TV. That's it from me. See you again next time.